Joining us now with Reaction Fox News military analyst Colonel David Hunt is with us, author of Foreign and Domestic, retired Brigadier General Tony Tata is with us, as well as author of Jesus, Jihad, and Peace, Dr. Michael Youssef, retired Navy SEAL Jonathan Gillum is with us. You know, let, let me deal with this, the, the self-proclaimed success of the administration. I'll put up on the map the areas of influence in Iraq and Syria. Mm -hmm. uh, it hasn't been diminished. This is all new territory. The, the airstrikes haven't worked. And then you can look at this map adapted from the Institute for the Study of War, you see the expanse of radicalism in, in Africa and, and the Middle East, Northwest Africa, Somalia, Kenya, Libya, Nigeria, Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, ISIS in Syria and Iraq. Um, all of this, but they proclaim success in Libya, Yemen, Somalia, Iraq, Afghanistan, Russian reset, um, you know, Poland, Czech Republic. None of it is working and Israel on top of it. Right. Well, Sean, we have to look at this in the way that the DOD and the administration is not looking at it. This is a multi-head serpent that is moving across this region faster than we can stop it because we won't commit to the fight. And what's even worse is it's like a tree that is spreading the roots all over the globe. We've seen the effects of it. Canada's seen the effects of it. Australia, Paris, Everybody. Denmark. Everybody's seen this and everybody is surprised. Well, Michael Youssef, you look at this barbarity, that they have a stated goal. We saw the Yazidis, what happened to them in the Sinjar Mountains. We've seen what's happened yeah. to Christians. We have seen people lined up and slaughtered. Now you see mass beheadings, one after another, yeah. people being burned to death. What part of the Islamic State not being radical Islamists does this president not understand? Why doesn't he get that? Uh, he he is determined that he is going to be a success even when he's a failure. And that is why I plead with him to go back to Cairo, this time not to cuddle the Muslim Brotherhood, but to uh, uh, declare that President Assisi had shown some guts and has shown some backbone and he has shown some neutrality and therefore get him to head up the fight and yeah. take it to the enemies. He knows the enemies better than Mr. Obama does. Colonel Hunt, El Sisi may die for what he is doing, including confronting imams as he did in the new year. So th this president doesn't take it as seriously. Why the difference? I'm, first of all, I don't, I, Amer I don't agree that the United States is not taking this serious. Obama's a civilian, El Sisi's a general, and, and so is the King of Jordan. But the United States is doing more than anybody in the world. The problem is we've got the, the people who are yelling about us want us to do more. Always say no boots on the ground. We got 3,000. If we really want to get at ISIS, which now has more territory than the United Kingdom, it's going to take American leadership on the ground. I don't hear anybody talking about it. We need the Brits on the ground, the French, everyone else, and no one's doing that. We're just saying Obama sucks. Okay, after we get that statement said, what do we really want to do? And people okay. seem to back away from the necessity of U.S. guys on the ground. It's the only way it's going to work. Gen General Tata, with the authorization, the use of force that the president announced last week with such great fanfare that's probably not going to pass, he, he says explicitly no boots on the ground. Expl it expires. It's got an expiration date. He already has authorization, the 2002 authorization. What would it take to defeat this enemy that wants a modern day holocaust that's willing to cut off heads and kill innocent people on a daily basis what did it take well sean you never want to put those kind of limitations on our troops uh, particularly if we're going to have troops on the ground even coalition troops on the on the ground we have nato forces being attacked we have coalition forces being attacked and the key word that i've heard throughout the conversation is we are responding we are reacting we need to be uh, proactive here. We need leadership, uh, rolled up sleeves leadership on the ground in, in the, the Arab nations, uh, pulling these Arab nations together diplomatically and politically and economically and encircle ISIS so that we can destroy them. This is more than just a military fight. It's a political fight. It's a diplomatic fight. It's an economic fight. It's an information fight. We need to leverage all of the elements of national power to defeat this enemy. And we need leadership to do that. And we need leadership on the ground in, in, in these Arab nations to pull them together, to show them the way. We've got them mad. They're mad. Jordan's mad. Egypt's mad. So this Arab on Arab peace is good, actually, but for the coalition. Capable. We, no, need to, no. we need to harness that energy and focus it to kill this enemy. What, what are you saying, Colonel? Last word. 
Yeah, they, they, that's all well and good, but the Jordanian military is not going to cross 500 miles in the desert. It's going to take U.S. logistics, command and control, and intelligence. Well, wait a minute. But, but so the here, number but the general got, won't say is 30,000. You've got 21 of these guys Americans lined the up and beheaded. Now Jordan's in the fight. Egypt's in the fight. Well, it's beyond awful. It's evil in our time. No, it, this is, this is not all disagree with ground. you. I think we need I ground. think we need boots on the ground, uh, Colonel. I believe we need boots I'm on the, the ground. Yeah, we need more force, and we need of, we need to lead from the front on this. We also yes, need to we accept need a lot the fact more that, troops on that, the ground. Jordan and Egypt, when they, we say that they're in the fight, they're not really in the fight. You know, they're they're going out there and they're fighting right, a they're battle. Not. They're throwing some bombs down. They're doing in the air. They either need to be in the fight or get out of the way so that we can lead it. Right. Period. Guys, thank you for being with us. We, go. we first have to identify the enemy, and the enemy is radical Islamists. And we need a president to recognize it and come up with a strategy without limitations, but to win. If we're going to send brave men and women into Iraq, don't give up the territory they fight, die, and bleed for. Keep what we, what we won. It's, it, it drives me nuts.